Hello you guys, welcome back to my turf and today we're getting these beautiful trees in perspective. Today is a bright and super sunny Saturday here in Hong Kong and I am as usual currently waiting for my friends to arrive for lunch well I arrived really early actually and the reason being is that I wanted to walk around and sketch for a little bit and as I was walking towards the restaurant I noticed that these flowers are blooming really beautifully in a bright orange color and it's currently a season of a lot of flowers blooming and a lot of flowers also um, falling and dying for lack of a better word and the reason for that is because the weather has been fluctuating really really heavily so it's going from rain to shine so today is a very shiny day but apparently it's going to rain all week next week so i think maybe we're able to catch these flowers as they bloom so Hong Kong is also well known for really heavy rains and it's so bad sometimes that the government does put up typhoon warnings so when it's typhoon season it's going to be really hard to go outside because also for safety measures the whole city is going to be closed so well that's only happening a few days in the summer all the days in between are usually really heavy rain so I thought I'd make use of the sunshine while I still can although it's a very hot I think maybe 28 degrees Usually they have a temperature thing in the park. I put on some sunscreen because I don't want any super weird tan lines, which I already have because I do love walking out a lot. And just decided to plop myself down on a bench as usual, pull out my sketchbook and get documenting. I'm not sure how much of this comes through, but there is so much noise in the city. So we are currently in an area called Causeway Bay. And this historically is a well, not historically. Currently, it's an area that is so popular. It's always filled with people hustling and bustling. It's a shopping center. It's got a really nice park here. It's called Victoria Park. And this is where a lot of people congregate on weekends because it's all wide and open. Um, but weekdays, I frequent here too. I just love walking around this park and also by the pier. But yeah, it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. It's a perfect... Well, you don't need my forehead in there. It's a perfect day to be out in the park just to admire everything and also be within the middle of the city. This is a scene that we're going to be sketching today. So I'm going to try and make sure that we get everything in perspective. So all these lines as well as the tops, I'm going to make sure that they line up and I might do that with a pencil sketch to begin with, just to make sure that they all really do line up. And we're going to get all the flowers in as well, like the details. See, there's some highlights and there's some shadows on these branches. So we're going to try and incorporate them and even though there's so many flowers we're going to have to simplify them because there's no way we're putting in all those details same goes with the windows especially because this is more of a background element versus a foreground but yeah these flowers are so beautiful you can totally see everybody just lining up to take pictures it's a beautiful background it's a beautiful background for your tiktok dance as well one of the really cool elements that I wanted to really include in my sketch is all these beautiful shadow shapes and also all these flower petals that have dropped from these flowers. So we're going to figure a way to put that into our sketch without actually um, bombarding it with too much detail. Quick intermission from future Becky here. So I am just going to explain to you how to really quickly draw things in perspective now keep in mind that this is not accurate, but this is a good way to get an approximation of what you would like to draw. So what we need is we first need to establish the first line. So this, this is the first vertical line. And then let's say, actually, let's bring it a little bit taller, both in the top and the bottom. Then let's say I kind of want things to go this way. That is not a straight line. Let me do that again. I kind of wanted things to go this way and then kind of wanted things to go that way. So it is important to establish both the top and the bottom line. Please excuse the wonkiness. Drawing in front of a camera is hard. Okay, 
So we got the first line. What we need to do is we need to establish the second line. So what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a line straight down from the top. Here it's touching, here it's touching, here it's touching the top, touching the top. Okay, really rough way. You find the midpoint. So the midpoint is about here. I mean, um, accurately, this would be, I think, the horizon line. But we're going to ignore that because we just want to sketch. So what you do is you pull this from the top here. You diagonally pull all the way down to the bottom right here. And then you pull this all the way up, of course, in parallel to the previous two lines because we want this to be in perspective. And then what we do is we just repeat the same process. So we do this, pull all the way down, and then pull all the way up. Find the midpoint again, pull all the way down, and then pull all the way up. Now, what you will see here is that the distance will slowly get a little bit closer to each other. And it's not going to be anything too dramatic or whatever, unless you have like a really dramatic slope for the top and the bottom. But you will see that the things start to um, recede in perspective. And that's kind of what you want. And that's honestly good enough for a sketch. All right, on-site location, Becky, back to you. That's just me playing journalist with myself even though I do it for my actual job. But yes, on-site Becky, back to you. Virtual Becky taking over from live Becky that you see on camera. Here, what you see me doing is I am currently putting in the pencil sketch and I'm starting with the top line of the trees as well as the base of the trees. And the key is to get everything sort of in line so you can clearly see the receding of the trees instead of me just approximating everything and drawing the trunks because they all pretty much have a very similar shape. They all have a trunk and some sporadic leaves at the top because it's not a very heavily um, populated flower bunches. So it was possible for me to do that and I decided that now that I have a sort of wire structure for the trees, I would be able to finish the pencil sketch and move on to the watercolors. Moving on to the watercolor phase, I just decided to start off with the sky as usual and I'll stick to my brighter colors while I can. So in the ground, for example, I noticed that it was a little bit dark. So I just try to spread the color a little bit more around with my watercolor. And one of the reasons actually why I start with the sky is because it is a pure blue. Whereas if I wanted to start on the building and it was gray, then I could just add another color and mix into it and that would make a gray but starting off with a pure color is also one of my considerations in order for me to mix less and in my head waste less time so what i'm currently trying to establish is the background first because i knew that they're all going to be fairly light compared to my trees that are in the foreground and the reason for that is i wanted these orange flowers to really pop so i wanted them to be the highest saturated color and everything else is going to follow behind it. So I started off with the flowers and I tried to look around at my surroundings and I tried to place them accordingly. I know it's impossible for me to draw every flower, but I could kind of see clumps here and there and I could see that they had a little bit of space between each other. So what I tried to do was I tried to draw in those clumps or represent those clumps with one stroke. And that's what I kept doing and I could sort of see that they go in an umbrella shape for each of the trees and it only became a little bit clearer once I started adding the leaves below it which also supports the clumps and therefore that is how I get the tree shape and only after that would I add in the branches because otherwise I feel like usually the branches overpower the flowers or that was not my priority at the very least so I wanted that to come after I just wanted to really really focus on the flowers first so then I went down to the branches I added the shadows on the left side of the branches because the sun was coming from the right. And 
then I also needed to remember that there would also be shadows on the ground. And in real life, I could also see that there is a lot of flowers that dropped on the ground. And I tried dry brushing it, but it didn't work because it was a water brush. But then I realized I could actually use my water brush because the bristles are a bit stiff and I could kind of splash them like I would do with a toothbrush, for example, to create like snow or splashes on a watercolor. And so I just did that trick and man, it was so fun. I like totally got the splatters in and it kind of looks like specks and it's not anything too solid because I didn't want the dots to be the same size as the clumps because I wanted the clumps to be the flowers and the um, speckles of the watercolor, the ones on the ground to be just the petals. So I had to make them smaller in size in order to stick with the scale. And I just figured that splattering was the best way to do it. And now I am sweating way too heavily. So I'm just going to call it quits right here. And we have a finished sketch. Alright, that's gonna be it for me today. Thank you guys again so much for joining me on my journey. I'll see you again next time. Bye and happy sketching!